Hey everybody, welcome back to Watch and Carry. So as you can see in front of you, uh, we're going to be talking about straps and bracelets today. Um, I take a few pictures of my watches every now and then and post it to my Instagram page. And these watches that you see in front of you tend to be the ones that get the most comments. And in particular, people who are interested in asking, hey, what is that strap or what is that bracelet that you've put on that watch? So I thought I'd go ahead and uh, give you a better look at them today. So we'll move these all off to the side and kind of go over them one by one. So buying new watches is always fun and exciting. Obviously, it's, it's great to get a new look if you can afford to do so. Uh, but sometimes you don't have to go as far as to buying a new watch to get a whole new feeling um, from your watch collection. Sometimes it's as simple as just changing the setting for the watch in terms of the strap or the bracelet that you're pairing with it. And I really do think that it can make the watch look a whole lot better or at least different and make you enjoy putting on the watch again. So we're going to start here with this one. This is the Seiko SNE535. This is from their Street Series. This is the green version. Okay, and I'm going to start by talking a little bit about the colors of the watch and then the strap and why I chose it. So the colors you can see here is an olive green. We've got this nice bronze, but also greenish um, three quarters uh, bezel. Okay, and what I chose to put on it is the Zarek rib strap. So the company is called Zarek. This is their version one for the TAM. The size of this is 22 millimeters at the lugs, and it tapers down to 20 millimeters at the buckle. Okay, the version one is no longer being sold because it's been replaced by the current version, which I will show you next. But uh, the reason why I chose this strap was I was looking for something to contrast the olive green color. Brown always goes with olive green very, very well, and this particular shade of tan does a good job. The watch seems to have a pretty rugged appearance given the shroud that surrounds the watch and that a real aggressive knurling here on the bezel. And so going with that rugged appearance, I think having this type of strap with these raised ribs, you know, does it uh, really, really well. Okay. And these straps are not cheap. They're about on a good day with a sale and a discount code, maybe about 55 bucks on a typical day, more like around $65. You can get these off of Zarek watches. Uh, online store or watches.com, which is a licensed uh, retailer for Zarek products, including their watches as well as their straps. Okay, so there we go. That's a first look at that uh, Seiko on the Zarek strap. Oh, and then I've also put it on a Recher uh, butterfly clasp in brushed black. Okay, just to kind of complement the looks and also to protect the uh, integrity of the leather when you're putting on the watch. Okay, we'll set that guy to the side. Let's move on to the next one. Now, this is the current version of the Zarek strap that you can get. So let's start with the strap this time first. Again, 22 millimeters at the lugs, tapers down to 20 millimeters at the clasp. This is the tan colored version. Again, you have that ribbed design as you did on the first watch. Really cool design. But as you can see here, the shade of the current version of tan is much lighter than the older version. Um, this is an older strap on the left, but even brand new, this strap was darker than this one was. So just know that when you do get the Xeric strap in tan, it's going to be much a different color than this one. Okay, but still very comfortable. Has this one, unlike the other one. Actually, no, they both have it. Uh, is made in collaboration with Nick Horween Leather. So you can see Nick's uh, insignia there. And they have combined with Zarek to make this uh, strap. Okay, and this particular strap is on a uh, Bulova Accutron Snorkel 2 with um, the orange seconds hand and the quarter um, uh, chapter ring. The reason I chose this strap was I wanted something to complement that hand and the orange on the chapter ring, and I thought the kind of orangey, uh, tannish color of the strap did it pretty well. 
and then matching the brushed finish of the case for that steel, I went with a brushed steel dual deploying clasp, again made by Recher, which also helps with protecting the leather when you put on the strap. Okay, so there's a look at the current version of the Zarek rib strap that you can get for 10. Now, I'm going to keep this here because if you decide to get the current tan version of this Zarek strap, but you go for the 20 millimeter version, not the 22 like this, this is the color you're going to be getting. So very unusual why they have such a difference in their color. So this is a 20 millimeter Zarek rib strap. Again, same design as we talked about before. But as you'll see here, it's a much darker shade than the current version. And the stitching here is also a different color. This is tan. This one is actually more of a light green or almost like an OD green color. It's really beautiful. Really, really nice. I actually really like the shade of this leather and the contrasting stitching. I just wish that they were consistent with keeping it on their 22 millimeter version. Okay, but again, 20 here at the lugs, tapers down to 20 at the uh, clasp. Again, I have this on a Recher dual deployant. And this one is actually paired to a uh, older watch. This is a Casio DW403, also called the Casio Skywalker. Okay, and the reason I chose this strap was I wanted something to complement the yellow on that uh, bezel. Really cool colors on this watch, but especially that yellow on the bezel. So I needed something a little bit yellowy. And uh, that uh, tan of the strap on this one goes really, really well. The watch also has a very vintage retro theme. And so the ribbed design of this strap kind of reminds me of the ribbed designs that you would have on 80s sports cars. So it kind of complements the retro theme pretty well. Okay, so that's a look at that strap over there. Okay, now moving away from, actually, let's do one more Zarek so I can get them out of the way. Okay, this watch is the Casio EFV 100D. Comes with 20 millimeter lugs, so this is a 20 millimeter strap. Tapers down to 20, uh, tapers down to 18 millimeters at the uh, buckle side. And I have this one paired to, again, a Recher dual deployant clasp in brushed silver to kind of match the uh, case or the lugs, which are also brushed. Okay, again, we have that same rib design, but this time we have some contrasting blue stitching here. And I think that blue just accents the white face really well. So the gray and the white are kind of very bland colors. They're very nice colors that go well together, but they're very bland. And so it would have been nice to have a colored second sand, but we don't have that. So I wanted to add a little bit of color, which is why I chose the, the contrasting blue stitching here in that. That navyish kind of blue, I think, is just enough of an accent, but not too loud to distract from the watch. Very cool watch, by the way. Very affordable. I think under $60 or under $70 on Amazon. Okay. Oh, and I should have mentioned all these Zarek watches come with uh, quick release um, spring bars so that you can put your straps on and off very, very easily no having to mess with a lug tool and jamming it in between the strap to release it. So really, really nice. Okay, so there we go. Zarek ribbed in gray with contrasting blue stitching in 20 millimeters. Okay, let's go ahead and move away from the Zarek brand. Let's move to another company that I've been using called uh, Sinike. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This is the exact same watch as the one that you just saw, but in the black version. So EFV 100D again. Comes with this really nice accented yellow hand and WR100 in yellow as well. Now uh, I put this on a Sonic 20 millimeter brushed stainless steel treaded bracelet. Starts 20 millimeters here at the lugs and maintains that 20 millimeters all the way to the clasp. The clasp comes with three micro adjustments, which is nice. 
really, really cool strap. I chose this because the watch itself gives off a ruggedly handsome kind of appearance. It looks nice enough that you can wear to a nice dinner, but also looks rugged enough, especially with that edifice brand, that you can kind of take this out um, outdoors or wear it day to day. And so I wanted a strap that combines that elegance, uh, ties in the brushed finish of the lugs, but also maintains that handsomeness that the watch gives off. And I think you get that with the um, treaded bracelet that's brushed here. I also wanted the bracelet brushed because I didn't want it to shine brighter than the watch itself, the watch case. And so having brushed keeps the watch as the center of attention, at least I think. And having that accent with the um, seconds hand in yellow and the WR100, I think is just enough to take your eyes off the bracelet, but also to tie in the bracelet at the same time. So really cool strap to kind of change up the look of your watch. Now, what I've also done is I've also taken the um, Zarek 20 millimeter rib strap, which I showed you on this watch earlier, and I've put it on this watch. So I'll give you a look at how that looks, because I also like this one quite a bit as well. And oftentimes I'll wear this watch with this leather strap too. So that's how it looks on the Zarek 20 millimeter rib strap in tan with that uh, slightly green stitching over there. So really... Pretty versatile watch. I mean, it's a black face, so you, you can't really go wrong with most colors. So let's show that off to you a little bit better here. The yellow from the second hand of the WR100 also kind of goes well with the uh, tan color here as well. Okay, so just another option to consider. Okay, the next one is the same exact bracelet, Sonic, but in 22 millimeters. And this is off a Casio Duro MDV 106B, obviously the B for blue. Now this watch is quite large, especially for my six and three quarter inch wrist, but it gives off a very industrial, um, kind of rugged appearance, but also kind of elegant as well. So again, ruggedly handsome. So I wanted the bracelet to be the same type of feeling, which is why I went for this. So 22 at the lugs. Tapers down to 22 all the way through to the clasp. Again, you get three micro adjusters on this. And blue and silver, especially brushed silver, seem to just go really, really well together. Again, with this watch, as with the MDV, the lugs... Um, or actually, these lugs are more of polished, I guess, so... A little bit different than the bracelet, but I think still goes pretty well. Very comfortable to wear. Some people have asked me with these uh, treaded bracelets, do they ever get caught up in your arm hairs? That's a fair question. I really don't have a lot of arm hairs to begin with, so I can't really give you a fair answer on that, but uh, you know, that's how my wrist looks. So with my wrist, I've never, for obvious reasons, had a hair get caught up in it. You might be a little bit different, so you may not want to choose this. Lots of little nooks and crannies for your hairs to get caught into, but uh, just something to be aware of. And this is a modified Casio, by the way, with silicone liquid on the inside. So that's kind of why you get that funky appearance with the uh, face when you turn it to the side. Okay. By the way, this uh, bracelet, uh, not only does it come in 20 and 22 millimeters, I believe it comes in 18 and 24. It also comes in black, uh, brushed black and brushed blue. Okay, about 22 bucks, so very affordable. Uh, comes with quite a large bracelet from the factory, but they also include this um, uh, pin removal tool. And they give you some extra spring bars as well. So you basically have everything you need in the package to size the bracelet for your wrist. So it's a one-stop shop for 22 bucks. I think it's a really good job. Feels really good, not too heavy, not too light. Uh, doesn't sound very tinny like some of those cheaper Casio bracelets that you'll traditionally get on this watch. Um, so really, really good value for the money. Or just really good value. Okay, let's go ahead and move to another strap uh, company called Coloreb. Now, Coloreb is actually the first strap uh, straps I used to buy for my watches. This, I think, is actually the third watch I ever bought. This is the Casio Flightmaster SNA413. Really nice blue, white, and red colors here. 
So the watch, obviously with all these numerals and uh, printings, is the highlight. So you want your strap to tie in those colors, go well with it, but you don't want the strap to take away from it. So I'm, I'm definitely did not like the stainless steel shiny bracelet that came with this. It was too much silver in my opinion. Uh, brown and blue and white seem to go really, really well together. So I went with this Cola Reb. Uh, this is a 22 millimeter strap. Granted, this is a 21 millimeter lug width. I just kind of jammed it in there because I couldn't find this strap in 21. Starts off at 22 at the lugs, goes down to 20 at the buckle. And I have this on a Recher, again, brushed dual deployment or butterfly clasp. And you just have this really nice, rich brown color. Granted, this strap is about five years old. I do tend to oil my bracelets or my uh, straps maybe, you know, three or four times a year, especially living here in Vegas where it's quite dry. But you get this really nicely made strap from Cola Reb. Contrasting white stitching when goes with the white dial and the brown here. This is the Venetia in rust brown. Just seems to go really, really well with the watch. So just another idea for your for your Seiko Flight Master if you have something similar. Okay, also very comfortable to wear, as are all the other leather straps. The Zarek is also very, very comfortable. Again, I have that same exact strap again, Cola Reb. This one I just put on a week ago. This is 20 millimeters, however, so you'll see that this one's a little bit different. The back is a, more of a different color for the strap. Okay, the printing is pretty much the same. 20 millimeters at the lugs, tapers on to, 20, uh, to 18 millimeters at the buckle. This time I went with a polished stainless steel dual deployment by Recher because the case on this watch is a polished silver or polished steel. This, by the way, is the Seiko SAA or SSA397. This is from their Presage line of watches. So you have this really beautiful jade green textured face. The design of the watch is meant to mimic the green you will find in a Zen garden. And so green also goes well with some types of brown. So I went with the Venetia in rust brown again, and I think goes very, very well. Okay, I will say that with the Cola Reb straps, they age beautifully. The older they get, the richer the color gets, as, does, as do most, qual uh, most quality leather items. And the more times you wear the leather, the more comfortable it will feel on your wrist as well. And uh, just in case you were wondering, what do I use to maintain my leather? I use this right here, leather conditioner, leather honey. It's usually a good idea to kind of grab a clean rag, wipe down your leather um, um, strap uh, with warm water first and then dry it off, and then you grab another clean rag and apply the leather and let it sit, and then decide if you want to add another coat, uh, depending on whether the, the leather is still dry or not. Okay, uh, one more analog watch here, and then we'll go into two digitals. So this is the Casio Duro, same as that blue one that I showed you. This is in their gold version. Okay, this one again is hydro modded. You can see there's a little air bubble there on this one. Now, uh, I've put this on a really cool strap. This is made by a company called Crafter Blue. And this line of strap is called CB10. It's called CB10 because unlike the CB08, the CB10 actually curves right here at the lugs. So I think their CB08 is straight, which means you'll have a gap like right here and right here, but the CB10 really curves nicely. And this is a 22 millimeter strap at the lugs, tapers down to 20 millimeters at the bracelet. Okay. And I bought this because I think this type of olive green goes really well with the gold and the black. And then as a side benefit, this is a curved strap. So it just naturally curves. And as you can see here, 
The lugs have a natural curve to them, and that curve line is really nicely complemented by the natural curve of the bracelet. And the thickness of the um, strap is just a little bit thicker than the thickness of the lug. So it, it doesn't protrude too much, but just enough to kind of maintain that curvature, which is really, really nice. Very, very comfortable. Comes with this stainless steel keeper and buckle. Now, if you want, I don't have it in front of me. There are also two um, rubbered uh, keepers that it comes with in case you want to take the stainless steel one off and put those green one on in green ones on instead. Now, this um, strap was a little bit difficult to fit to this watch, so I believe if you look at the look at the link below, this is actually made for a certain line of Seiko. The problem is uh, this strap will only go so far into the lug, and because of that, I couldn't push it any further to line up the holes of the lug with the holes of the strap. The holes of the strap actually stopped here, whereas the holes of the lug stopped here. So how do I get a spring bar to kind of go from this hole to this hole and then down to that hole? So I actually took a slightly larger spring bar. Uh, this is usually 22. I took a 23. I bent the 23 millimeter spring bar in the middle. So let's pretend that this spring bar is um, 23 millimeters. I took a pair of pliers, pinched it here in the middle, kind of bent it at a angle like this, okay? And then what happened there is that angle was able to ride that outline of the holes for the lugs and matching the holes for the, um, the strap. So a little bit of work and modification that you have to do uh, to get this to work, uh, but so far it seems well. It's very secure. The strap does not pull away. As far as I know, a Crafter Blue does not make a strap for this particular watch, which would make it easier. So unless you can find a different strap brand, um, this is the best one I found so far, uh, you'll have to do those modifications. I also just really like this raised center part on the strap slightly raised here like a half millimeter that just really draws your eyes to the uh, the gold and the black of the watch it's a really really great strap okay crafter blue all right we'll finish up with two um digital watches okay um if you haven't seen my instagram page already i invite you to do so and you'll see there that a lot of my posts are actually from the casio line the casio world time ae 1300 and ae 1200 so this is a casio ae 1300-1 av from the factory this comes with a resin rubberized strap in black which looks pretty good but a lot of people have been saying hey is there a metal bracelet that you can buy to give this watch a more premium and rugged feel. So yes and no. Casio does not make a stainless steel bracelet in black uh, that I've found so far, but this other company called Skamai does. Now Skamai can be looked at as a company that kind of rips off Casio. So your feelings may differ on whether or not you want to support them by buying this bracelet, but this bracelet comes off of a Skamai I believe it's called 1299G Digital Watch. It's about a $13 watch. You do have to buy the whole watch to get this bracelet, but because that watch copies the world time, it fits perfectly inside the lug width of the Casio. So it's as simple as taking this bracelet off the Skamai and popping it onto the Casio and it works perfectly. So we have 18 millimeters here at the lugs, quickly tapers, uh, not tapers, quickly widens out to continue this uh, line in the, um, in the uh, lug all the way down to the clasp and the clasp comes with four micro adjustments which is nice the bracelet is very cheap feeling in fact a lot cheaper feeling than the one that you get from casio the standard casio world time in silver the ae 1200 uh, comes with this bracelet which is also cheap feeling but it's actually not terrible it feels good enough, has a decent amount of weight, just a tinny sound, but this is much, much cheaper sounding and much cheaper feeling. But if you want that metal look, you get this really nice uh, brushed metal finish on the uh, clasp and on the bracelet that will give you as close to that metal type of feeling that you want to get from this Casio. This company also sells this bracelet in gold. So for example, 
You can get the 1299 Skamai G in uh, gold as well. And then I've salvaged that gold bracelet and put it on this green Casio. And this is just another option for you to do. These bracelets are adjustable, uh, very similar to the Casio style of bracelet here below. Uh, it can be a little bit more difficult because the tolerances in manufacturing are not as well controlled as that of Casio's, but it is doable and it is easy and nice to easy enough to size with some few basic tools. If you don't know how to size this bracelet or this bracelet, I invite you to look at one of my older videos where I size this Casio bracelet. That procedure is pretty much how you're gonna size the Skamai ones as well, very similar. Okay, so that's a look. And then the last one I'm gonna show you today is a Casio again. This is the Casio AE1300-8AVCF with the gray case. I've modified this one quite a bit, which is why it has these yellow subdials and this blacked out bottom, so ignore that. But I chose this strap because I wanted something to complement the matte gray that you get on this case. And I think matte gray goes really well with olive green. You can kind of see I have a thing for olive green here. This bracelet also comes off of Casio. Casio recently released their newer updated version of their calculator watches. And it comes in like blue, red, white, and olive green. This one obviously comes off the olive green model. Now from the factory, this strap is actually a 20 millimeter lug. The Casio watch you see in front of you is an 18 millimeter. So you are gonna have to take a hobby knife or something to cut one millimeter off of each end to match this 18, but it's you know a resin rubbery material. So very, very easy to do. Just be very careful when you're cutting. Uh, just take off just small amounts uh, because if you cut too much, you're going to be left with a gap between the uh, strap and the case and it won't look nice. But really cool strap, has these small cutouts here which make it breathable and comfortable enough to wear but also add to the retro kind of vintage feel you, you get from these calculator, uh, from these digital Casio watches. All right, so we'll put these all back in front of you again. But uh, yeah, that's I've got some other watches in my collection, but none that I've really had comments on with their straps. So just wanted to show these to you. But hopefully this gives you some inspiration on things you might add to your watch. Some people are purists and just like to keep the watches the way they are. I totally get and respect that. Uh, but for some of us, we get a little bit bored with the way our watches look. There may be that one watch or two that just never gets enough wrist time. So if you're kind of looking for a way to change the look of the watch, but still give the watch some life, try looking into different strap options, which might be all you need to kind of reignite that love with the watch. So we'll lay these all out again in front of you here. All right, guys, so that'll do it for today's video. If you have any other comments or questions or maybe any other strap suggestions that you might want, I know NATOs and Zulus are very, very popular. It's not something that I particularly like to wear, but I am always open to trying them out. So if you have any suggestions like those, please put them in the comments below. And as always, have fun, and I'll see you guys on the next one.